15th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Sue, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Serta? Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Excused. Rinflesh? Excused. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Warner? Here. 13 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move the minutes of the last Common Council meeting <laughs> be approved and that the same stand is entered on the record. Second. Moving to the second that the minutes of the past Council meeting stand approved. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion to carry. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance. What do we have? Alderman Groff. Alderman Groff, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First is uh, from Alderman Wangerman to the mayor advising that uh, he's resigning his position from the Common Council. That can be accepted and placed on file. And if this council wishes to this evening, we will start taking names for his position immediately, uh, go out for two weeks. And then uh, once the names are, you can send them to Sue, the city clerk. Send your names, or res resumes to Sue. Uh, and then this council can decide who will be our next alderman for that position. So, okay, we can accept and file this. It's an email from Jane Wong Kautzer advising that she's resigning from the mayor's international committee. And that one can be accepted and filed also. And on appointments, hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Edward Zurich to be reappointed as Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations, term to expire October 21, 2009, signed by the Mayor. Your Alderman Honor, Van Ecken. I would ask for a suspension on that appointment. Second. Is there any objections to suspension? I move that suspension be, I mean, uh, the appointment. Be approved. <laughs> so, Move to the second that the appointment be approved. Under discussion. Hearing none. Join me in roll. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Congratulations, Ed. And um, following appointments to the Business Improvement District. These came in at the prior, at the last meeting. Jane Wo Davis Wood to be considered for the unexpired term of James Hansen, whose term expires 9-16-05. And reappoint Robert Heary, Alan Rudnick, Greg Wegeman, and Richard Grenke for three-year terms to expire 9-14-07, signed by the mayor. And those can be confirmed. Alderman Warner. I move to approve the uh, mayor's appointments. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Public forum. Okay, Dan Ver Verhels? Verhasselt, I'm sorry, Verhasselt. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> Dan, I need your home address, please. 705 Fairway Drive. Fairway? Correct. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank all the aldermen, the mayor, the clerk, and, and the attorney for our time this evening for my five minutes. I'm here this evening to speak on behalf of an old friend. She's friend of many children in the city. She's very, very old, and she knows Sheboygan since its birth. This friend is Sheridan Park. I'm also here to speak in behalf of the citizens of Sheboygan. 
I would specifically like the attention of those eight aldermen who did oppose the rescind vote on Sheridan vote back on August 16th. But I'm here tonight for three reasons. Number one, I'd like to ask or announce the successful completion of our Save Sheridan Park petition. We have collected the necessary signatures. Number two, ask you to acknowledge the citizens' view of Sheboygan. And number three, to ask you to change your position in favor of preserving Sheridan or let the citizens of Sheboygan vote this out in February. Regarding the petition, this was an outstanding success by the Friends of Sheboygan's Parks. Approximately 100 people of various ethnic, age, and socioeconomic backgrounds were involved in this group. This is a very good grassroots organization that came together in very short time. Approximately 3,700 people were approached in the city of Sheboygan, and of those people, 3,300 signatures were collected in favor of preserving Sheridan Park. For those of you wanting to do the math, that's about an 89% success rate. And that was my experience as well as I was out there collecting hundreds of signatures myself. Of those 33, and remember this number, of those 3,300 favorable responses, 300 were considered not random because I'm gonna talk about some numbers a little bit further on here. They were not random, meaning they were picked up at picnic events, park events where people were invited. So we were selecting people who specifically wanted to come and sign the petition. Whereas the, the, re, the other 90 some percent were actually collected door to door. So they were totally random, random surveyed people. We worked very closely with the state elections board over the last 60 days to make sure that everything was legit and everything was accurate. We made sure that all the rules were circulated to every person carrying a petition out there. There was nothing more important to me than make sure that this thing was 100% legitimate. I didn't want any funny business involved. So that's it regarding the petition. Before I move on, I'd also like to mention regarding the petition, we are going to be holding a press conference at City Hall on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. And then invite everybody in this room to be there as well. And that is when we'll be officially, officially bringing the petition signatures in. Point number two, let's not ignore the people. A subtitle to elder person I think should be representative. I'm sure you all agree. But let's talk about representation a little bit. Over the last um, afternoon here, I consulted with a math professor at UW Sheboygan, and I was talking to him about my numbers that I had, about those favorable and those that we approached. And we did the formula on it using statistical analysis and correlation by taking out those 300 random that I talked about, those who came to us, and those who we actually approached. And we can say with 95% accuracy that 86 to 90% of the registered voters in Sheboygan support our cause. Now, if you follow that, we're basically taking that and applying it to the 36,000 registered voters in the city of Sheboygan. So that would mean approximately 86 to 90% would mean 30,960 up to 32,400 voters would actually support our cause if you follow that math, that analysis. Vocal, yes, minority, no. Odds are pretty good that some of those are in your ward as well. Some of them are very prominent people, <laughs> Some of them voted you into office, and some of them might vote you out. Um, point number three, some of you went on record supporting a referendum or public input, and I think this is great. I really do. I think that's how it should work, um, seeing that we went to the work to get these 3,000 signatures. By granting this referendum, you might lose a little time, but you're going to gain two things. Besides potential validation of your position, you're going to get respect from the people in your wards, and you're going to have a more healthy democracy here in the city of Sheboygan. In conclusion, I think we can work this out between our group and the city, the city council here. We have many more options that we could consider how we would, we would rather work with the city council than fight them for the next six months. I personally like the idea of working with the county and sharing services because I think sharing services has proven in the business culture to save a lot of money. But ultimately, I just want to save Sheridan Park. So on behalf of the projected 32,000 supporters in Sheboygan and my old friend Sheridan Park, I respectfully request a change in your vote or a citywide referendum on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Larry, Larry Rupp. Larry, would you please get up to the mic? And I need your home address, sir. Okay. 828 North Water Street. North Water? Yes. And you will have five minutes, and it begins now. Thank you. I have a few observations that I would like to share with the member of the Common Council with regard to Sheridan Park. I have carefully read and reread the, your police department and city hall site analysis study. There were five sites presented. 
to the site assessment team and they picked Sheridan Park. However, I was puzzled as to why the mayor's top choice, the 23rd Street site, was not included in the list presented to the assessment team. It seems an odd omission. I found one comment from the site analysis study especially interesting. I quote, an empty park which does not have public facilities would question whether the neighbors in this area would approve or reject the building of a police facility on this land. In grading this aspect, the team ass uh, assumed it would not be popular. That's unquote. Our petition canvassing has proven that prediction correct. Many, many people stated how appalled they were at the thought of losing Sheridan Park as they signed our petition. The study did, did contain one uh, apparent error. Sheridan Park is not empty. It is used by the, uh, by the neighboring people and it contains a basketball court in first class condition and play facilities for children. Usage, I predict, would go up if picnic tables could be installed there in the summer months for one and all to use. Trees and green space are things we hold in trust for our children and grandchildren when we are no longer here. All we are basic, and, and Sheridan Park is an integral part of that trust. All we are asking is that the people of the city of Sheboygan be allowed to decide the fate of Sheridan Park because it is our legacy to the future. Please, place this issue on the ballot. That is all we ask. Thank you for listening to my plea for Sheridan Park. <clears throat> Vicki Meyer. Vicki, could you give me your address again, please? It's 3107 North 26th Street. Okay, and you have five minutes. Council, Mayor, thank you for allowing me to speak again on this issue. I'm gonna kinda of say some of the same things that you've just heard, but I do believe that when the vote was taken to take Sheridan Park as a police station, the council was not informed of all the facts. But since then, we have done our best to give that information needed to make an informed decision. We know the 23rd Street site was not on the Kimmy and Associates evaluation. We've been told how detrimental it will be to the neighborhood. Professor Byron explained this to us. There will not be any cost savings to the taxpayers. Vicki Hall explained this Sunday in Sunday's newspaper. The people of Sheboygan, from city experts to small children, have said no to the destruction of Sheridan Park. And if it is destroyed, I do believe this is going to be setting a very, very dangerous precedence in our city. So you can change this if you place this issue on the ballot. Then you can hear directly from the voters what they want. Thank you. Thank you. Carl Table. Carl, can I get your home address, please? Sure. 2402 North 25th. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, and fellow citizens of the great city of Sheboygan. The last time I addressed this council was September 16th, 2003. My topics that evening were the three C's, compliments, concerns, and cuts. I return this evening with an update and with some further suggestions. First of all, Mr. Mayor, I'm very happy to see you and also to see that you have good health. May God continue to bless you with that. Congratulations to the new city clerk, and a special thank you to Bill Wongerman for his service as a council member and also his wonderful writing of the history of the city of Sheboygan. And to Alderman Vanderbilt, it would be nice if the city could hire you to do, the city, do a city newsletter which would really be a wonderful feature for Sheboygan. You do an outstanding job of promoting our community with your articles. And to Blue Harbor, I would like to compliment the Blue Harbor organization for paying a page in the Sheboygan Press 
with the people whom they hired, the local people from our city and also from the surrounding areas. A few concerns. Recently, the Sheboygan Press had a banner headline that we are losing population. This is a major concern, major concern for our city, for our schools, for our businesses. How many employees do we have in this fine city? And how many live in the city? Another topic of concern, last year, the stormwater fee was adopted or we can call it the stormwater tax. But you need to show the public, council members, that by adding that, you are going to reduce the budget appropriately. And why not call it a tax and put it on the tax bill rather than the water bill that the citizens can deduct it from their tax bill? Another concern, why are we still paying rent for the city attorney and the planning office? Regarding saving Sheridan Park, I had the privilege to be in New York City in August, and I got to Central Park at least twice. What came to my mind, here in Sheboygan, we're gonna take green space away. Uh, Mr. Alderman and Mrs. Alderman, please save Sheridan Park. I wanna thank one of my aldermen, Bill Steffen, for his vote on the second vote as far as the reconsideration to keep Sheridan Park. Another idea regarding the police department to our fine officers who serve our city and who do not know what they're gonna come about, you deserve a new building. I have always been an advocate for that building someplace downtown for the reason that I see constantly our fine officers walking between City Hall and the courthouse. And I don't want them on the road going back and forth from another distant location. So please keep that in mind. And then recently, our governor has made a big issue of cutting state vehicles. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like you to uh, take a look at how many vehicles our city owns, how many we could possibly cut, and do any of those vehicles leave our city at night? A few ideas. I had the privilege to serve with many of you fine people on this council but I do feel that you can continue to make it more viewer friendly for our public watching. And they do watch and they enjoy it. It's their city and their government. Explain the procedures more often. And I'm gonna ask Alderman Werner to reintroduce a measure that you members of the council will individually bring in the citizen concerns rather than the letter just goes to the city clerk cold and then sent to a committee. The public wants to hear that their issue was brought forth by their elected alderman. And please have more slots for public input. When I call the city hall this afternoon, the city clerk's office, well, there are only five slots. These people, the taxpaying people should want to be able to speak. Open it up, and if your meetings go late, this is our city and our government. Regarding the 2005 budget, it's a weighty matter, but I have dealt with 35 years of school budgets, six years of city budgets. And please don't use fear tactics like we're gonna cut police officers or we're not gonna pick up the leaves. No, we need to make big decisions. And you are the elected people. A year ago I suggested these and I come back. Cut at least one position in the following offices. In the office of mayor, city attorney, finance, purchasing, information systems, and human resources. Excuse me, Carl. Uh, Five minutes are up. Could I sorry. have the courtesy to finish? I have about a minute. May I have the to... You'd have to get a vote. Excuse me, Carl. The council would have to take a vote. Five minutes, five minutes. So we really have to stay with that unless the council wishes to open the floor. But that's it. Is there any discussion? We have a motion before us a second. Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? OK. Continue. Uh, thank you, and I would also hope that that extension, that courtesy would be extended to all of our citizens, not just me tonight. Uh, as far as cutting one position in those respective offices, I urge you to merge the planning department into public works and take Peter Fullerton's position from planning and move it into public works. I know that Tom Holton works day and night and has done most of the legwork, whether it be Blue Harbor or our many, many uh, street projects in the city. 
And I also would like you to investigate the merger of city's purchasing department with Sheboygan County and with our school system. And these permanent cuts will be a savings of at least, at least a half million dollars. We're not touching officers, we're not touching leaf pickup and so forth. I humbly suggest these, I love Sheboygan, and you have big decisions to make, and you have to make big decisions. Thank you to, for your service to the city of Sheboygan. Thank you for the courtesy extended to me. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Thomas Gessler. Thomas, Hi. could you give me your home address, please? 1711 South 12th Street. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. I have a couple uh, comments that I would like to make in regards to our tax increase coming up. I believe that these, uh, the city of Sheboygan here should look into monies due to the city, such as outstanding fines. Uh, there's a landlord in town here that owes the city a million dollars. I think it's time to start collecting that. Uh, there's developers in the area. They come into the area. They borrow money. Uh, I could name some, but I won't. They seem to borrow money, and then they uh, put the money right in the weasel sack, and they leave town. They have no, no uh, regrets. They take the money, and they run, and they never pay the city back. I think it's time the city really take a hard look at these people that owe the city money and collect some of this money, and I do not believe they should cut the police officers at all because, to me, that's just inviting the criminals to this city, and we have enough of them here right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next thing we have Alderperson Alder person Sigali statement. Alderperson Sigali, you would like to speak? Thank you, Your Honor. On April 6, when I was elected into office, it was one of my proudest moments, probably unbeknownst to most of you council people. And on April 20th, when I took the oath of office, I swore to uphold the standards so directed to the office I was to hold. After approximately six months on the council, I feel now the need to say that as a council, we need to act more professionally and to respect each other. We are an organization where we come from different walks of life and different ethnic backgrounds. We agree to disagree, but at the same time, we need to respect each other in the process of doing so. Rude and snide remarks made by all the persons against all the persons should be unacceptable behavior in these council chambers. We are looking like immature adults who are resorting to comments that are unbefitting the officers, offices that we hold. Our sole purpose on this council is to work for the betterment of our community and for the people we serve and who work and live in this community. So I am now asking you, Your Honor, to please, uh, as a leader of this council and our community, that when such matters should arise in the future, that you put a stop to them immediately and, if necessary, discipline the offender or the offenders. Thank you for your time. Thank you. you have Michael. No. Oh, Michael, you got to present that award. We have an award from Civnic. Mike would like to show you before we get into the consent agenda. So, mm -hmm. Mike. You may recall that uh, last year about this time I had told you that, first of all, Cities and Villages Mutual Insurance Company is our insurance company for liability purposes and for employee safety. Uh, I believe there's over 40, 43, 48 communities that are members of that. Uh, each year there's a program, uh, they authorize a program for new safety or liability programs uh, to be introduced. Uh, they evaluate them and the top five programs, new programs that are presented are given a, a certificate and a cash award up to a thousand dollars for usage uh, for safety materials. Last year we were fortunate enough to uh, win, win, uh, win two programs which uh, which hadn't occurred before. One Bob Steve had written and one I had written. 
Uh, this year, programs were submitted again, and uh, to be honest, I didn't think our chances were, were very good simply because we had won two last year. While we were selected again, uh, the, I have the certificate here, and the program was written by uh, Frank Calco on a coordinated hand signal safety program to be used in public works and uh, park departments. And this is being adopted at uh, many communities uh, throughout the state to have a coordinated approach to that. So I just wanted to make the council aware of that award and another uh, cash receipt, I believe, of up to $1,000 for use in safety equipment from CIVMIC. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Second. Moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted, resolutions and substitute resolutions be put upon their passage under discussion. <laughs> and at 13.1 through 13.21. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Werner? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion to carry. 1322 through 1325 to be referred. 1326 will hold for 1235 and 1327 through 35 to be referred. Along with 1334 and 35 comes my budget documents and they will go to finance but before they go I'd like to explain the budget where it's at today. Included in your budget documents this evening are agenda item 1334 and 1335 which detail my budget recommendations for the 2005 city budget. Attached to the main document is a brief summary of the budget recommendations. I worked within the appropriation and the levy directives this council established and have remained under the expenditure restraint limits established by the state in developing this budget. As actions taken previously were part of the budget process, tonight is another step towards reaching consensus on budget priorities for 2005 and deliberations will now occur at the committee levels. As all of you are aware, to comply with the council directives and be within the state expenditure restraint limit it was necessary to reduce requests for general fund resources by $3.4 million. Reductions of this magnitude necessitated a team approach and suggestions were given, excuse me, were taken from the public, our department heads, and city employees. For their input and assistance in identifying costs to saving opportunities. I would especially like to thank our department heads for their long hours of work reviewing individual budget lines and for the difficult choices that had to be made. There are three individuals who I like to single out for their assistance in this budget process and who have worked tire tirelessly the past few years in order to control our city budgets and spending. I commend Nancy Buss for her detailed work in both preliminary and final budget preparations. Our department heads rely on her to provide them with the accurate wage and benefit projections. With employee wage and benefit expenditures accounting for 85, repeat, 85% of our budget, the importance of her work cannot be overstated. Secondly, I commend Rich Gebhardt for his continual updates on our budget process, funding sources, and recommendations on funding levels. 
is knowledge of the state shared revenue process in an area of transportation aids are invaluable to our budget resolutions. Lastly, I'd like to commend Mike Hutz, who for three decades has reviewed and challenged every budgetary expenditure with our department heads in order to identify potential savings. He has consistently used his experience to save a buck where many thought none existed. His understanding of our entire city operations and the work done within each department will be difficult to replace in this coming year. Throughout this budget process, I heard one theme over and over again from our residents. Do not cut city services. And I repeat, do not cut city services. Having a first-rate police department, professional and prompt responses from our fire department, our garbage routinely collected, our streets plowed and cleaned, our parks maintained, our library available as a resource, and our city departments available for information and assistance is what separates us from other communities and makes our community the special place it is today. These examples were often cited and repeated as priorities by many of, as priorities by many of our residents that I have met during this budget process. I am happy to report that despite the dire predictions of massive layoffs and service reductions, the budget I present to you includes no layoffs and maintains all vital city services. It is important to note that no layoffs will occur in critical areas of public safety and emergency response. As I challenged all of you last year, as I challenged all of you last year, I again do so this year. For any additions made to this budget, I challenge you to find a corresponding reduction in expenditures. With that, I urge you to support your support that you will support the recommendations included in this document. Thank you. Okay, 1336, by Alderman Bonet, authorizing the city to engage the services of Special Outside Counsel for Common Council and its Law and Licensing Committee in the matter of hearing of Seoul, Seng, Petroleum, and authorizing payment for said services. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to ask for a suspension of rules. We have a motion before us for suspension. Is there any objections? Any objection? Proceed, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, make a motion for a resolution to be put upon its passage. Moved and seconded a resolution to be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Sigali. Stefan? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. Oh, I'm sorry. How about Dennis? Bowman? Aye. Aye. You did. I did. <laughs> 12 ayes, 1 no. Sorry, Dennis. <laughs> okay. You already had me counted. 1337 and 38 will lie over. 1339 to be referred. 1340 to be referred. 1341, by law and licensing, recommending filing documents submitting various license applications for a period ending June 30th, 2005 and June 30th, 2006, and that Class B fermented beverage, malt beverage license and Class C wine license applied for by Jose Hernandez be denied based upon the applicant's previous record of violations in the committee's standards for issuing license. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, make a motion to accept and adopt the report of the committee. We have a motion and a second before us. I need to ask if uh, Jose Hernandez is present. His attorney is. Uh, yes, he is. And I'm present as well. I should reintroduce myself to the council. My name is Tony Rizimius. I'm a 
the attorney who represents Jose Hernandez. I'd ask that Mr. Hernandez be allowed to say a few words to the council. Yes. My name is Jose C. Hernandez, Jr. I live at 330 Forest Boulevard in Sheboygan Falls. Uh, just wanted to see if the committee can pass the beer and liquor license, the beer and wine license. Because this, uh, this bar is not going to be just for Mexican, it's going to be for all, all kind of people in there. We're not going to discriminate nobody to go in there or not. It's going to be for everybody. And I uh, just uh, say that sorry about last last time, last Monday that we had the council meeting that I said about the uh, in court address and all that. I was thinking to rent there and now I talked to the landlord, uh, Yolanda Torres, and he said it was taking already the house. That's the house where Cesar Los Canos used to live. And now I'm staying with my ex-wife till I can find a place where I can move to Sheboygan to be closer to the bar here, to be, to be in there, you know, take care of everything, you know, run everything normal and all that. And I just see the committee can pass it today because I've been wasting too much money already. And, but my fine is already paid. I pay it off already, and let's see if we, they can pass it. <coughs> I wish the council here can help me to pass the, because I'm be spending too much money already, and uh, and see what happened here. That's it. Thank you, sir. And if I'd be allowed to say a few words as well, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you again. My name is Tony Rezimius, and I'd I'd like to expand on and I guess clarify a few of the comments by Mr. Hernandez. Uh, as he mentioned, he mentioned several times uh, uh, wasting too much money. What, what he's trying to communicate to the council is that Mr. Hernandez, in attempting to become a businessman here in the city of uh, Sheboygan, has signed a two-year lease to rent out a, a premises here to run a tavern. Um, and he comes to you tonight to seek a beer and wine license in order to be able to run that tavern and become a businessman. Uh, as you've heard uh, from the Law and Licensing Committee has not recommended, I should say a portion of the Law and Licensing Committee has not recommended that that license be granted. Now Mr. Hernandez has attempted to provide answers to the Law and Licensing Committee <coughs> as to any questions they may have. Uh, the committee has asked many legitimate questions and I'd like to just share with you briefly some of the answers provided and, and some of those, those questions that were asked. Uh, the committee has had questions about previous ordinance, uh, a previous ordinance violation by Mr. Hernandez about a year and a half ago. Uh, Mr. Hernandez acknowledges that ordinance violation and had, more importantly has, had, has attempted to communicate to the committee that he wants to take steps to make sure that when he runs a tavern that nothing like that would occur and to learn from his mistakes. In doing that, uh, he's attempted to engage the help of those familiar with security in taverns and has proposed and communicated to the committee uh, that he post signs within the tavern, clearly indicating that this is not a place uh, for non-law abiding citizens. He wants to station uh, an employee at the door to check IDs uh, as people come into the bar. And he also just wants an opportunity to be able to work with law enforcement so that they can educate him and they can work together in order to run a law abiding uh, establishment. Uh, an additional question a legitimate question posed by the committee was, why has Mr. Hernandez not paid off the citation which he had previously received? Uh, the answer provided by Mr. Hernandez, uh, quite obviously, is that as a result of this lease, he's really worn himself thin in his financial condition. That answer clearly was unacceptable to the committee. And Mr. Hernandez has stepped up and found a way today to pay off his fine in full from the prior ordinance violation. He looks today for an opportunity from those members of the committee who had previously voted against him and those, I believe, silent majority here and the council who are willing to grant him an opportunity and a chance. Another question asked by the committee was whether uh, Mr. Hernandez's previous ordinance violation is, would somehow illustrate the propensity for future violations if he were granted a license. 
Uh, Mr. Hernandez attempted to provide to the committee information indicating his, his true character over the term of his life rather than this uh, one violation, rather than the character that this one violation has painted upon him. Uh, a man testified before the committee by the name of Harold Green. Mr. Green uh, worked, it was actually supervised Mr. Hernandez at Plastics Engineering during Mr. Hernandez's 25 year tenure there. Mr. Green testified to the committee various character attributes of Mr. Hernandez, his dependability, and, uh, and various other information, trying to paint a fuller picture of Mr. Hernandez to the committee. Uh, what we're really trying to communicate to the council is we seek that Mr. Hernandez not be judged by uh, some mistakes of the past. He's shown, I think, an honest and straightforward approach to attempt to rectify those mistakes of the past and receive an opportunity to work here in the future with the police, with the city, uh, to run a lawful establishment. Uh, in the end, Jose has spent uh, 25 years living and working in this community, and I believe that that is the character that should be judged, and that's the chance that he should be given. He should be given this chance in his retirement to become a businessman within the city of Sheboygan. He should be given a chance to prove to the council, to the committee members, and to the community at, at large that indeed he is able and more, more than able, that he is willing to create a lawful establishment for those of the Hispanic culture and other cultures to attend, uh, enjoy themselves, but in a lawful manner. I think if he's given this one opportunity, he'll prove that to all of you. I thank you, and I would appreciate any response from any of those I would hopefully characterize as the silent majority who would support Mr. Hernandez in giving him his chance. Thank you, Thank sir. you. Okay. If there's no other discussion, Alderman Bonet. Uh, just a couple of clarifications for you. In the committee, it was a unanimous vote. And that was an inaccurate statement that it was um, a partial vote. I have the minutes from the meeting. Um, second thing, I still stand behind the, the committee's decision. As I said before, it comes down to a basic uh, concept of understanding that obstructing justice is wrong. He covered for two people, who, or for a person who was breaking the law, and in both times he met with the committee, he felt that he had done that person a favor. Instead, actually, he was breaking the law on himself. Um, mistakes of, of past choices, as the attorney stated, in my opinion, lead to accountability, result in consequences, which is why we have the Law and Licensing Committee there to um, review these situations on a case-by-case -case scenario. I feel it's imperative that we hold those standards high because the license is a contract of trust between the community and the individual concerning a sale of a controlled substance such as alcohol. And those choices have to be made on a day-in-day -day basis as a person who has a license and he's demonstrated time and time again every time he comes to, before the committee that he felt that obstructing justice was in essence a favor or he was doing right by doing that and our committee does not agree <coughs> with that. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, in regards to my comments that a portion of the committee, I believe that not the entire committee was in attendance, and I do believe that some members of that committee will vote in favor of Mr. Hernandez tonight. Uh, in addition, in regards to Alderman Bonet's uh, thoughts on accountability, I believe Mr. Hernandez is attempting to be accountable here, and I think we can stress accountability, but I think we need to provide an opportunity in this case. There are times which people, if, if they accept accountability, as Mr. Hernandez has, they have to be given another opportunity. Otherwise, they will no longer try. This is a man in his retirement who is trying to become a businessman. He's seeking one opportunity, and one opportunity only. And I would plead with the council members to give him that opportunity. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think Mr. Hernandez had one violation a year and a half ago. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Um, now, if for some reason we do deny the gentleman the license this evening, how long before he can apply for the license again? I have that answer. Alderman Bonet? Ah, uh, yes. It would be the next licensing year. And to be more accurate, he had two, two violations. He actually served two underage drinkers in the incident. I see which he recognized and stated to the committee he knew they were underage, so. 
Now, a year and a half ago was in the other licensing time, and now we are into a second licensing period, but he would need to wait for another licensing period. Is that correct? Till the next. Till the next. Correct. The, the next licensing period would start July 1st. All right. Thank you very much. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I, uh, I am one of that, uh, I'm one of the persons that I, I am the person that had that caused the committee to be a, to have a partial vote. I was un, unable to stay for the last item on the agenda uh, during that meeting, and that item on the agenda happened to be the issue regarding Mr. Hernandez. Um, I, I was present during the first meeting, and quite frankly, I de debated the issue of whether the matter should be referred back to committee, and it was referred back to committee, so this is where it, uh, it ended. I guess I'm looking, I'm looking at it a little bit different than, than what some of the aldermen are looking at it, and perhaps what the committee looked at it. Uh, there's been many instances where the committee, and in previous uh, public protection and safety meetings, where people have been given a chance to 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 to, to uh, make amends, to 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 do better, uh, to to put a plan in place that will prevent uh, problems in the future. From what I can see with Mr. Hernandez, he, he's just about bent over back, uh, backwards uh, and flipped over twice to, to accommodate any concerns that we've had. Uh, and we keep telling him it's not good enough. And what is it that we're asking for? Uh, are we going to wait another year? I don't know that a year is going to change the personality and the character of man that we have standing here before us. I think that is unfair um, and unwarranted. So I am going to vote against the, uh, the resolution uh, to deny the license. Okay. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? <clears throat> Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. No. Perez. No. Sigali. No. Stefan. No. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. No. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Seven eyes, six no's. Motion carried. Thank you for coming up. <clears throat> okay. 1342, we'll go to Committee of the Whole. 1343, by law and licensing, recommending that the that the hearing to determine whether the alcohol, beverage, and tobacco license Mr. Singh, petroleum shall be revoked, should be heard by Law and Licensing Committee. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, ask for a suspension of the rules, please. We have a motion for suspension. Is there any objections to the suspension? Hearing none, <coughs> proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Moving and second to accept and adopt the report of committee. Under discussion. Go ahead. Attorney. <clears throat> Just uh, the request by the Law and Licensing Committee is to hear the, uh, hear the hearing in the Law and Licensing Committee. And that's been done uh, at least one time in the past, I think maybe twice. Uh, I, I think the Law and Licensing Committee feels it's working out pretty well. Um, I hope the council feels the same way. I think it's working out pretty well. It, it means. Uh, mm -hmm. The Law and Licensing Committee hears the testimony, makes a recommendation, and then submits a report to the council, and the council gets to act on it then. And uh, it avoids having all the full council hear all the testimony during a council meeting. And it, uh, uh, I guess from our office, I, we think it's, it's uh, effective and uh, efficient to do the hearings in that manner. Okay. <clears throat> Just another discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. And Serta. Aye. Twelve eyes, one no.
Motion carried. 1344 to be referred. 1345 will lie over. 1244, resolution by Alderman Groff, Berg, Manny, Montemayor, authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget. Alderman Groff. Your Honor, I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Sigali. <coughs> Sigali. <laughs> Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. And Graf. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1251, general ordinance by Alderman Warner, Vanderweel, Serta, relating to one-way streets and alleys and angle parking so as to add Maryland Avenue, one-way eastbound from South 14th Street to South 13th Street. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. The motion to second before us, under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this ordinance change will address the concerns and problems experienced by the residents on this one block segment of Maryland Avenue. Over the past few years, the Public Protection and Safety Committee has had dozens of complaints from residents in this area. There have been parking problems due to factory employees not using <coughs> the parking lots provided and parking on the streets in front of the people's homes. We've instituted an impact, impacted parking zone uh, to help with that about a year ago. and. Uh, Later, we installed a four-way stop sign at 13th in Maryland because of the excessive speeding and congestion due to the factory, factory residential mix in the area. The next problem to arise was the increased use of Maryland Avenue in this one block section as a truck route. Residential streets are not truck routes. No truck signs went up last week and that situation has been alleviated. This change to one-way street will address the last problem faced by the people on Maryland Avenue, and that is excessive truck traffic. Excessive traffic, period, I should say. Making this a one-way eastbound will create a situation that will divide the traffic into two directions when it's heading west. It's either going to have to head south or head uh, north on 13th Street. Making this a one-way eastbound will uh, Will, will help that neighborhood uh, a lot. It will also make it pos impossible for semi-trailer trucks to use this as an exit using 13th Street because it will not have enough turning radius to turn on a 13th Street in either direction. Uh, just today, our traffic officer, Sergeant Tarkowski, Director of Public Works, Tom Holton, myself, and myself met with uh, officials from Mayline to discuss the no trucks issue and the idea of that being a one-way street. They did have some concerns. We will continue to work with them to address some parking issues further down on Maryland Avenue that will alleviate some of their problems and also on New Jersey Avenue so their trucks will uh, better be able to enter and exit their property. This change was discussed in the Public Protection and Safety Committee and recommended by the Police Department and it was a direct request by the people on Maryland Avenue between 13th and 14th Street. We believe this will be a positive for the neighborhood and ask for your support in solving the problems these city residents face. As we all know, that whole area around there is in need of all the help we can give it, from Sheridan Park to the south on Indiana Avenue and, and to the north on Penn Avenue. Uh, Neighbors Against Drug has been very active there, and community <laughs> policing has been troubleshooting that neighborhood for several years. And this is one of the solutions we came up with, and I think it'll help them a lot. Thank you. Alderman Oh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Warner answered my questions. Thank you. There's no other discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Montemayor. I guess so. Uh, okay. I guess so. Perez. I guess so. Yes. Well, I don't have that on my thing here. <laughs> Sigali. Yes. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Thirteen ayes. Motion carried. 1252, General Ordinance by Alderman Warner, Vanderbilt, Serta, relating to no parking periods as so, as so as to delete the north side of Center Avenue from the no parking 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. except Sunday and holidays from North 13th Street to a point 100 feet east. It's north. 
It should be north. It should be north. Trust me, it should be north. <laughs> Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I move the general ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this came to us from Mr. Farmer of 1234 Center Avenue. Uh, the need for parking restrictions no longer exist, and uh, the committee recommends removal and allowing the residents again to park in this area. It's an area where there used to be a, a place where a tractor trailer had a backup, and it's no longer that need is there in a residence now will have access to the street. Oh. There's another discussion? Would you call the roll? Perez? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. Thirteen ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I move we, uh, to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 1985-1G for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the Common Council with respect to the room tax lawsuit in which it is involved. Yeah. Hold that thought. Steve just said as long as we're just going to discuss this, let's do the other matters first and we'll go on to close and we can adjourn from there. Right? The, uh, it's my understanding we only have one member of the Committee on Risk Management who was able to sign the document that would be acted on when we came out of closed session. So I think we're going to have to hold that document until the next council meeting. So <clears throat> I think we can still have the closed session, but there won't be a document to act on when we come back. So it makes so, sense to do this. So we might as well finish up the other documents. Okay. 1347 can be accepted and placed on file. 1348. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we need a graph. Graph. We need second. a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1348, we'll go to building use. 1349, to public works. 1350, to public work. Public protection and safety and public works. 1351, strategic fiscal plan. 1352, a resolution by Alderman Warner, Vanderweel, Rein Reinflesch, and Serta approving the Homeland Security Grant from Wisconsin Office of Justice Assistance. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion to second before us. Under discussion, Alderman Martin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, sounds like a good idea. Any restrictions, any extra responsibilities that, that we would have to perform that we don't have now? Uh, any money requirements from us afterwards? Alderman Warner? I think I don't know. This <clears throat> actually is uh, a remake of the document we had that we held last time. And I actually have something that should answer your questions. All right, thank that. you. This resolution, I think it's great news for the Sheboygan Fire Department and the city of Sheboygan's taxpayers. Two weeks ago, we pulled a document from the consent agenda in hopes we would be able to get the funding as a grant rather than, than using money from the Sheboygan Fire Department's major equipment account. Well, the wait was worth it. Even more than worth it, more than we could have imagined it would be worth it. We were talking about trying to save about $34,000 in matching funds, and not only did that happen, but an additional $96,000 was granted to us for a total of $130,000 more than the anticipated $143,695. These are Department of Homeland Security grant funds and will cover the entire cost of the rescue vehicle chassis, which is what we would have had to pay for, and also an emergency generator, polar sized, for station number one, lifting equipment, lighting, radios, mobile computers as well, and all in addition to the mobile command post, which the original grant was going to cover. This also will be covering training and other items. And I think it's a great thing for the city and our residents, as well as the fire department. And I'd like to thank Chief Zyra and for his efforts on this, and also Deputy Chief Sharp, who worked very hard on, on these grants. And thanks along with the entire department for putting this together. We ended up getting all these resources in our city to protect the safety of our citizens and actually act as a regional team, uh, a shared service, so to speak, with the rest of the county in this area and, and surrounding area as a rapid response team. So, I mean, this is a real plus, and at great cost, actually bringing federal dollars back into Sheboygan. 
through Madison. I don't think Madison took too much of the money on its way here, but they gave us more, and I think that's a good thing. So. Um, uh, thank you, Alderman Warner. But we're going to enter into a contract with the Wisconsin Office of Justice Assistance for the Homeland Security Grant. What are they going to ask us to do? Or just Chief's accept here. the money? That's it? Chief's here. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Montemayor, thanks for the question. Basically, the question is this. Is our, would we be required to go outside the city of Sheboygan in case of an emergency? The answer is yes. We do it now without this equipment. Okay. We do it with mutual, for mutual aid in the mm -hmm. county and also anywhere in the state. There are about four different cities that have been giving grants on, on this type of situation. The city of Milwaukee has received like two or three million dollars to have a, what they call a class A rescue. Okay. Um, the Fox River Valley received a large amount of money to be a class A rescue. We're called the Light Plus team. We could, you know, like if you remember in Cleveland when the silo collapsed in Cleveland and mm -hmm. there was a gentleman killed out there, we now will have the equipment if we're called for mutual aid to do this. Yes, we could go to Kenosha, we could go to Racine, but that's part of being and living in America. When New York fell, fire departments from all over the state of New York went to help. This is only basically giving us the equipment to use. We have it here in the community to use for, for nothing. There's no matching monies. It's given us a lot of equipment which we never would have had, a command post which we've been looking for for a long time. Uh, to allow the police department to use it for their SWAT, SWAT events. So it's really a blessing that we've got this to use for our community. Okay, so that's probably the, the only <clears throat> part of the contract is it will have to go perhaps, perhaps, other places in the state of Wisconsin. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I need a roll on that? Mm-hmm. Would you, would you call a roll? Sigali. Oh, I'm sorry. Else. Marge, did you? Oh, sir, I just I, I wanted to speak on 1351. That's not the time that I have to vote on this one first. I'm sorry. Yeah, 1351 is already passed, Marge. Uh, it's referred. It's going to strategic fiscal 1351. Can't say anything about that. Would you like to know? I'm just I I guess I'm just a little bit upset about the fact that. You're going into negotiations with the county concerning the elimination of the city police emergency dispatch center. And I, for one, will not be in favor of that whatsoever. I don't understand why we're talking about combined services of this when there really hasn't been that much discussion with this. I would not be in favor of transferring our dispatch center to the county whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 1352, would you call it a roll, please? Sigali. Aye. Yeah. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Perez? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. All right. Full session. Okay. You want to make that motion over again? Order. I'd move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 1985-1G for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the common council with respect to the room tax lawsuit in which it is involved. Second. We have a motion and a second before us to go in closed session. Under discussion. Would you call the roll? Uh, okay. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Sigali? Oh, so much fun. 13 eyes. Motion carried. Take a couple minutes. We'll be back. Let's take a minute break. Though. I'm never... Yes, that was tried, and I'm sure will be tried again and brought up at, at future transit meetings. Also, um, to let all the aldermen know that